Hey Yogi, welcome to day nine of the 30 day yoga challenge for beginners. Today our affirmation is I am passionate. So how we'll be infusing this affirmation into our practice is by working on balancing the sacral or the second chakra. It's also called Svadhisthana. And this chakra has to do with creativity, sensuality, sexuality, passion. So really working on bringing that into balance so that we can give our affirmation, I am passionate, more energy and help it to sink in more deeply, body, mind, and spirit. Have a great day and have a great practice. Namaste. Start on your back. Bring your feet as wide as your mat and your knees together. Having the knees point up towards the sky. Place one hand onto your pelvis. The other hand can be right below the sternum. Close your eyes and start to breathe. You don't need to change your breath. Start to notice your breath. Are you breathing deep or shallow? Fast or slow. Smooth or choppy. And start to deepen the breath and slow it down. Let the tension melt away from your face, forehead, eyes, cheeks, and jaw. Deep yogic breath. Then on your inhale, start to think, I am. On your exhale, passionate. I am passionate. Do that a few more rounds. And then slowly start to extend the left leg out towards the front of the mat and draw your right knee in. You can either hold on behind the thigh or the knee. Just gentle here. And place that foot down and shift your hips over to the right a little bit. Cross the knee over the body. Not real far, just enough to get into the spine a little bit. back to center pull it in again and switch it out so extend the right leg out draw the left leg in keeping both feet active so pushing into the heel and the ball of both feet Starting to wake up the sacral area gently. Place the foot down, shift the hips over to the left and let the knee come over to the right. And 
Now come back to center. Place both feet on the ground again. You can have your eyes opened or closed. Now cross your right foot over the left knee. So it's not gonna go all the way across, it's just gonna end up right below the knee. Keep the foot active, so don't let the ankle turn in. Push through the heel and the ball of the foot and then gently let the right knee push away from you. Now if you're not feeling any sensation, you can walk the left foot in a little bit. As you push the right knee away, you can even lift the left foot off the mat and draw the left knee in towards the body. So whatever feels good for you today. I am passionate. And switch it out. Again, keep this foot active now, pushing the left knee away from you. If you need more sensation, walk the right foot in closer to the body. Pushing the left knee away. If you need more sensation, lift the right foot off the ground or hold on to the leg and draw it in. If you find one side is way tighter than the other, which is normal, you might wanna stay in that side a little bit longer. I am passionate. Both feet to the ground. Roll onto the right hand side, using your right arm for a pillow. Let's take a couple breaths here. And then slowly push yourself up to seated. Let your head be the last thing to come up. Eyes can be closed, cross your legs, pull the flesh away from the sitting bones. Feel free to prop yourself up on a bolster. Neutral pelvis, lengthen the spine. Reach the back of the crown of the head up towards the sky. Take a couple cleansing breaths. Again, tuning in, noticing how you're feeling. And draw the lower belly very gently in and up, directing the flow of breath up. Expanding in all direction as you inhale and soften as you exhale. And do a big shoulder roll, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, tilt the pelvis forward so it's like you're trying to lift the tailbone. If you're a little bit tighter, your hands can be behind you pushing. If you're a little bit more open in the hips, hands might be able to come down in front. Just don't round the back. Keep drawing the chest forward. Keep the chin tucked slightly to lengthen the neck. You just want to feel sensation, not pain, not strain, not pulling. Relax the face. I am passionate. And slowly come up, switch the cross of the legs. Pull the flesh away from the sitting bones. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, tilt. Again, to go to where it feels good for you, this side might be completely different and that's okay. I am passionate. And slowly come up. Make your way to your hands and knees. So swing your feet around, come into tabletop. Wrist directly under the shoulders, knees directly under the hips. Breathe here. 
Now I really want you, we'll move into cat-cow and I want you to focus on initiating the movement with the hips, with the pelvis. So as you inhale, tilt the pelvis forward, lift the tailbone up. Exhale, tuck the tailbone. Inhale, lift the tailbone, which will arch the back. Exhale, tuck the tailbone, which will round the back. Keep going, work with your breath. Remember the movement matches your breath, not the other way around. So nice long inhale, nice long exhale. Make the movement last that whole breath. And come back to neutral. Come into modified child's pose, knees as wide as the mat, big toes can touch. Bring your hips back just as far as they go comfortably. Forehead to the ground or stack the fists. Take a couple cleansing breaths. I am passionate. Now come forward onto the hands and knees. Walk your knees back a couple inches and have your shoulders a little bit past the wrist. So this is called modified plank. Take an inhale here. Exhale, lower down, squeeze the elbows in. See if you can land the chest either before the belly or at the same time. Uncurl the toes. Now make sure that your hands are more in line with the chest instead of under the shoulders. Push the toenails into the mat and let the heels turn out a little bit for cobra pose. So I want you to focus on really grounding and rooting the, the sacral area, the pelvis. So keep that neutral by drawing the navel towards the spine. That'll lengthen your tailbone towards the feet. And then inhale, draw the chest forward and up so you don't compress into the low back. You're drawing forward and up and you're keeping the tailbone lengthened. This is Bhujangasana or cobra. And then slowly lower down. Let's do that again. Rise up. Shoulders away from the ears, elbows bent. Don't let the elbows get straight and the shoulders hike up towards the ears. So pull the shoulders back. Elbows are in, pointing back. Lower down. Take a breath. And then lift up. And lower down. Now push back up to the hands and knees and bring your right foot in front for a low lunge. <clears throat> Walk your right foot over to the right side of the mat. Okay, so you really want the knees to be, you don't want them to be at 90 degree angles if possible. So walk the left foot, the left knee back. Walk the right foot over and let the toes turn off the mat slightly. The knee points in the same direction as the toes. Now keep the hips square, try not to dump and hold here. Now, if you feel like you could go a little bit further, you could do some pulses. The key is to make sure the knee is pointing in the same direction as the toes and is right on top of the ankle. Now, walk the right foot all the way over to the left side of the mat and bring it in towards your body a little bit. Let the right knee come down to the ground. So now the right shin and the foot and the knee are all down on the mat. Now for pigeon pose, a lot of times people, teachers will say to have the shin parallel to the top of the mat, but that's not even comfortable for me. So it's okay if the foot's in at the body, you just don't wanna be sitting on the foot. So the foot is over to the left side of the mat, the knee's over to the right side of the mat. Keep the hips square, make sure not to fall off to the side. Back leg is parallel to the long side of the mat. Now, your body's probably not super warmed up, so we're just going to feel sensation again, not pain. So you just go to where it feels good for you. If you can come onto your forearms and that feels okay, that's fine. Try to feel sensation here in the right glute and hip. I am passionate.
If you have blocks, you could put forearms on blocks as well. And then curl the back toes under, walk the knee in a little bit, come back to the hands and knees. Now, however you can, bring the left foot forward. Walk the right knee back. Turn the front toes off of the mat, out to the left a little bit. Keep the hips square. Left knee is right on top of the ankle, pointing in the same direction as the toes. This is lizard variation. You can do pulses, just keep the hips square. I am passionate. And then walk the left foot in towards the body and then over towards the opposite side of the mat. Gently place the knee, shin, and foot down onto the ground. You might want to walk the right foot back a little bit. If you need more of a stretch, just bring the left knee to the left more. Do not grab the foot and yank it up. If you need more, curl the back toes under and walk your whole pelvis back. And breathe again one side might be way different than the other and that's okay you might want to hold again the more challenging side a little bit longer give it a little bit more love and attention i am passionate eyes can be opened or closed just go to where you feel sensation a couple more breaths Curl the back toes under, walk the knee in, and then come back to the hands and knees. Let's take a breath here. Okay, now swing the feet around and come to seated. So I'll give you a couple options for this next pose. It's called Gomu Kasana or cow face pose, but we're just going to do the legs of this pose because that's challenging enough. All right, so this is what I'm gonna show you first. Now, if you have blocks, you might wanna sit on a block. Um, that's probably the easiest way to do it rather than a bolster or something. Okay, so I'll demonstrate on the block, but you can definitely do this on the ground. All right, now have your right knee folded in and pointing straight forward. Bring your left leg on top and walk the foot over as far as you can to the left, trying to eventually stack the knees. So my knees, I don't think have ever been stacked and that's okay, but that's the direction that we're going. Now keep the hips square because if you're on the ground, especially your left hip might come up off the mat. So try to keep them both firmly pushing into the mat. Now, if it feels okay, you can lean forward. If you're on one block, you might wanna bring a block in front. Keep lengthening the spine on your inhale, lengthen, exhale, tilt. Now, you might not need to tilt much. You might feel sensation already. If this is too much for you, do what we did in the beginning, Sukhasana, easy seated, forward fold. Listen to your body. It's not gonna make you a better yogi or more advanced because you do the more challenging poses. Tilt the pelvis forward to feel more sensation. If your tailbone's tucking under and your pelvis is rolling back, really try to sit up on something. And come up, come out of it somehow. All right, now, left leg under, right leg over. So you might need to adjust, walk the foot over. If you're on a block, maybe bring a block in front. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, tilt, lift the tailbone up. Try to relax, relax the face. A lot of times in these challenging poses, <laughs> I wanted to word it right, 
our face can get really tight. So just try to relax the forehead and the eyes and the jaw. Come up. If you're on a block, you can move that, extend your legs out in front of you. Just kind of go from side to side. And then we'll come into Baddha Konasana or bound angle. So you can bring the soles of the feet together. And you could stay on a block for this, that would be fine. Hold on to the ankles. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, tilt the pelvis, lift the tailbone. This one can be a little bit trickier keeping the spine straight. So really just try to tilt the pelvis. Again, lift yourself up if needed. There's no shame in using props. You can have a gazing point or close your eyes. I am passionate. Repeat that a couple of rounds. Then if you want to round into it, I'll let you do it for a second. I know it feels good. And then slowly come up, extend your legs out, and lay all the way down onto your back. For Shavasana, if you know you like something under your knees, go ahead and put something under your knees. Or if you don't have that and your low back hurts, bend your knees, feet wide, knees together, just like we started. Arms by the sides. Close the eyes, relax the face, come back to your affirmation just for a couple rounds and then let it go. Let go of control of the breath, of the body. With each exhale, soften, relax more and more. Let the ground carry your body weight. When a thought comes into your mind, acknowledge it and then let it go. Deepen the breath. Feel free to just stay here for five or ten more minutes. Otherwise, deepen the breath and bring some movement back to the fingers and toes. You can reach your arms overhead for a full body stretch, even arch the back a little bit. Reach the feet in one direction, hands in the other. And then roll onto your right hand side using your right arm for a pillow. And breathe here.
Yeah, and then push yourself up slowly. Head is the last thing to come up. Coming back to Sukhasana. Easy seated pose. Pull the flesh away from the sitting bones. Neutral pelvis. And just bring both hands, kind of making a diamond with the fingers pointing down onto the pelvis and the pelvic bowl. Breathe into your hands. I am passionate. And bring your hands together in front of your heart into prayer. Thumbs gently touching your heart center. Let's show gratitude for our practice and close our time together with one om. Take a deep breath in. Um, and bow your head, bring your thumbs from your heart center up to your third eye. Acknowledging the energy that's within you, around you, connects us all together, never goes away. That energy within me acknowledges the energy within you. And I thank you so much for letting me guide you through your practice today. Namaste. Namaste.